Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In this video, I'm gonna be installing a thermostat and running a new thermostat wire back to the boiler. Now, I've already worked on the heating in this house. Guys, uh, check out the description for the links for the other videos. So this zone was the one zone I never got working because we don't know where the thermostat is. But for those of you that have suddenly have no power at your thermostat or your thermostat is not working anymore i am going to show you how to run a new wire to your thermostat so what can happen is ruins can shoot through the wire somebody put a nail through something or some other reason that the wire has been severed that the thermostat is not getting power anymore so with that in mind we'll look at our setup all right so this is the only room that has no heat because the thermostat is unknown where it is so the plan here will be to install a thermostat so i'm probably going to install the thermostat here so for thermostat placement center of the room is probably ideal if you have it like where the light switch is there every time the door opens it's going to drop the temperature down so you're going to have a cycling thermostat or a cycling zone for that matter so i think i'm going to put it here i'm going to follow the beam on that side there and go back to the boiler now keep in mind you also don't want to be too close to the boiler because that will also offset the thermostat with the heat from the boiler because of the amount of heat coming off the boiler all right so this is our zone valve i never connected it because we don't know where the uh, thermostat is but the plan here will be to uh, run the wire back to the motor and switches here I marked it here so we'll connect those back together and then this will connect to the thermostat and if everything goes according to plan we will have a functioning zone so with that in mind what we'll do now is material and tools all right this is the materials list for this job so I have a basic programmable thermostat thermostat wire uh, this is just a two wire thermostat wire. You can get more than two, but for this kit, uh, for this job, all I need is a two wire thermostat wire. Marettes, also known as wire connectors, and then clips. So these are staples for low voltage wire. Guys, this is the material list for this job. So what we'll do now is a tools list. All right, guys, this is the tools list. So I have my pouch, uh, basic hand tools, hammer, level, measuring tape, whatever else I might need. I have my cordless kit, so I probably only need the impact, we'll see how this goes. For safety equipment, safety glasses, earplugs, wire strippers, and I also have my multimeter in case I run into any problems, I need to test something, I'll have it with me. Right, so this is our thermostat. It's not big. It actually fits really nicely right here. So that's where I'm going to put it. So when we take off the cover, there's our cover. We have the actual thermostat. Now, because I have no way to actually um, put the wires into the wall, I have to get creative with uh, how I want to want to do this. I think what I'm going to do here is make a bit of a notch into this and that way the the wires will come up on the back side so this will be flat because there's no actual indentation or anything for this to uh accept the wire because the wire is supposed to come into it from the wall i'm gonna have to make a little notch to make this work all right so i made a line what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use a grinder with a fiber blade to just do a notch into the wood so the wire can uh, go inside the uh, surface of the wood and then it'll come back out and then we'll just continue on. So guys, make sure that you have earplugs and eye protection on. You could also use a skill saw, but I don't have one here.
Okay, that looks to be alright. So what I'm going to do is I will strip the wire back. I'll get the the wires uh, into the two leads. So the R is going to be the black and then the W is going to be the white. Okay, so with our thermostat wire, we'll strip back the other sheathing. All right, so I have my two wires. So this is eighteen gauge wire. So we'll just strip them both back. I say about a quarter inch is all you need. And now we have our plate here. So the black will go to the R, and then the white will go to the W. All right, so this is now uh, connected, so give it a tug. Now, I forgot a screwdriver that would be small enough. So what I did here was, here's my knife with the snap-on blade. What I did is I took a grinder and then I cut a little section of the blade out to be a flathead screwdriver, and this worked out. But guys, make sure that you have a small flathead screwdriver to get to the terminals on the backing plate because as you can see here, these things are really small. All right, so we're going to take our backing plates. Now, the bottom of the notch I want covered up and I wanna make sure that the wire goes into the groove or the notch, whatever you wanna call it that I cut. So we'll put a level on the top. Another way to check for, for level is if you go off the edge here and then off the edge here, as long as they look the same, then you're probably fine. And that looks to be okay. All right, so this is the smallest screwdriver I have, and then you see how small the terminals are. So this is why you need a small screwdriver. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to uh, tighten and loosen off the nuts to get the wires in. Otherwise, with this now on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my thermostat wire back to the boiler. All right, so for clipping the wire, make sure that the wire stays flat. You don't want it twisting because it just won't look very nice. What I'm going to do is, I'll put a clip there, and then I'm going to run it as neatly as I can back to the boiler. Alright, so like I said, let's keep this flat, but it'll come up to here. I'll try to make this as nice as I can. I would say for the clips here, go in a straight line every 18 inches. If you have to start doing bends, then add a couple extra clips. So like one will be here, probably one will be here. But just try to be as neat as you can because this will be visible. Alright, so I stapled a wire uh, to the beam and I ran down the opposite side of the beam all right so every 18 inches i went down uh, what i recommend is put a clip back here to hold this tight and then you can pull this tight so it'll look better if it's um if you have too much slack then it'll just look sloppy and just not all that nice all right so this is our wire here because I cleaned this up last time, everything's a lot easier to see than uh, than what was before. Besides that, everything's been labeled. So these are our end switches. For this one, this is our external transformer. So the white is the, the hot, and then the black is the common. They did this backwards, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the two end switches to the external transformer. And then 
I will connect the thermostat wire to transformer 2 R which is right here so our thermostat wire will come to here and then it'll go to the zone valve all right so this is the power for the boiler so now the heating system has been completely shut off so the first thing I will do is I will do the wires for the in switch going to the external transformer all right these are the wires for the end switch so I'm going to cut off the end because the wires are all mangled so these are 16 gauge wires so I'm stripping it back about a half an inch Okay, that's good. Now we'll do the other side. Okay, so the end switches are done now. So what we're going to do is connect to uh, T2 transformer number 2, the R terminal, which is also known as the hot terminal. Alright, so we have our thermostat wire here. I'm going to connect to here and then... I'm going to connect to here. So I'm going to leave myself some extra slack. Cut through that. All right, so this is transformer 2R. All right, so this is the uh, motor wire, one of them. Guys, it does not matter which way you connect which wire to what. Okay, so this is our T2 common. Okay, so for our transformer number two, we have our hot wire coming here. Our thermostat wire, our R terminal, connects to the thermostat. We have power going to the thermostat. It's coming back on our W wire. So when the thermostat closes, it'll send power to the motor. The other end, the other wire for the motor is going to go back to the T2 common. So when there's a call for heat, that's going to actuate the motor, closing the end switch, and then we will have heat in this room. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the power back on to the boiler. All right, so now I'll turn the boiler back on. And now we'll go put the thermostat onto its backing plate. All right, so we'll put our thermostat back on. Okay, so I have power coming to the thermostat and there's nothing on the display. So we'll pull this off. So we do have 26 volts coming into the thermostat, but there's nothing with the thermostat. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to jump out the thermostat and we're going to see if we get a call for heat at the zone valve. So I hear water. Okay, so we see that uh, there's a call for heat. There's no call for heat on the main floor. All right, so I put two batteries in. It says on the label it needs to have batteries. Oh, well, we got something on the screen. Let's go up to 80 degrees and we'll see. 
All right, so the zone valve is currently open. There's a call for heat. Let's drop this down. Okay, I heard a zone valve motor. I believe that is the zone. All right, so this is the zone. You see how we have resistance. That means the zone valve is currently off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the thermostat, turn it up, and see if we get a call for heat and if this is going to have resistance or no resistance, just like this one. So go ahead and turn the zone on and see if this will just slide to the right. All right, so we'll turn up a call for heat. It says heat on. We'll go check this zone valve now. All right, so we have a call for heat, and the zone valve is open. All right, so that concludes this. So I've installed a new thermostat, but guys, if you ever have a problem where you're not getting power to a thermostat anymore. It could be that you punched a nail through the thermostat wire, a rodent chewed through it, or some other type of physical damage that has caused a break in the wire. So with that in mind, what we'll do now is an overview of this job. All right guys, so that concludes this up. So in this case, because the thermostat is in the same room as the boiler, this was really straightforward, really simple to do. If you have to go elsewhere in the house, if it's finished, as in there's drywall up, just go on the inside of the drywall. You can either hide the thermostat wire behind baseboards or crown molding, or you can just neatly clip it to the drywall uh, as you run back to the location of the thermostat. But in either case, I think this is one of those things, don't overthink it, it's relatively simple. Clip it up as you need to and try to make it neat and tidy. The time of this job. The time was two and a half hours. This was straightforward, it was simple, it was all in one room. If I had to run this across the house, that would change things dramatically, but the added benefit to this video is, in a very small area, you have an idea on how to go about this to make sure that you are going to have power going to your thermostat if you, for some reason, lose power. The cost of this job. The thermostat clips and wiring, the cost was about $60. So I think the thermostat wire is going to be the single biggest cost depending on how far you had to go. I bought 10 meters or 32 feet and I had a couple feet left over so everything worked really well. I can save the thermostat wire for a future job if and when the time comes. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.